we have people here from all over the place, Canada, US, all parts of India. And, and there's just so much talent here and so many different perspectives that I think, unfortunately, we only have 36 hours. And so, so that's why we try to make this into a development dialogue as opposed to like a one-way conference. Um, this is the 10th year. And so I thought I would take a little bit of time and talk to you a little bit about what's happened in the last 10 years and, and what's the agenda for the next 10 years. And so, uh, can I have the slides? Okay, so, so if you, you know, our journey actually started with, with technological innovation. And technological innovation, you know, I and Jayshree, we live in Boston. So I joined the board of MIT in 2000, and we started a center for technological innovation in 2002. And, and the idea behind technological innovation is that you start with an idea that the world has not seen before, an innovation, right? And then for that idea, not to be just an idea, but to have an impact on the world, it has to be directed to some burning problem. And so innovation plus relevance is equal to impact. And, and, and so, so when you do that, instead of baking the whole idea, you connect the people, the innovators, with the problem upfront so that as they finish the idea, it's more likely that they'll have a pull in the marketplace and, and have an impact. And it's been pretty successful. And, and so in addition to MIT, it's, uh, it's the same model. We funded the same model to get started with NSF, which is a $7.4 billion uh, science funding agency. And also we have centers at UNB, Queens, IIT, and also we run a university innovation network where 100 universities in US and Canada are a part of that network. So, so a lot of this is sort of technological innovation. But in 2006, uh, you know, Jay Shree and I, we said, let's do something in India. And, and the natural thing to do was to maybe duplicate the MIT center in IIT because both of us went to IIT, but, but someone Jayshri said, let's do social innovation because it's probably more relevant to India. So at that time, I was still running quite a few companies. And so Jayshree made a lot of trips. She must have made quite a few trips to India. And she visited all the nonprofits in, in India, quite a few of them. And finally, uh, we came to the conclusion that if you really want to do social innovation, you have to lead it with relevance, not innovation. That is, the solution has to be co-created with the people who need it. And then the new idea that you bring to solve the problem does not have to be patentable, first time in the world, huge competitive advantage, but it has to be done with the people who need it. So just to implement that concept, we came up with an idea called Social Innovation Sandbox. So, so in, in, in 2007, uh, Naveen, uh, Naveen, was in Boston at that time, Navin and his wife uh, Neelam had Ford Foundation scholarship to be in Brandeis in Boston. So we met both of them there and Navin, he came in that red bus with a big smile and smile is all he had and fortunately hasn't lost it yet. But the person who actually gave us home was Ashok Shatter, the person who actually built this whole thing here and, and provided a lot of leadership and he's quite a visionary. He was one of the few people who could actually see what we were talking about and what's possible. And, and, and he's with us here today, so I want him to stand up. And it's not an exaggeration if I said the foundation would not be here without Ashok. Ashok, thank you. So, so, so the so the following year, we built this center, and, and Ashok played an important role in terms of uh, supervising, getting it done, and so on. And, and then in 2008, January, is when we started the development dialogue. So this is the 10th year of development dialogue. And, and, and Naveen, and Jayashree, and a few other people in the audience here were there when we started the development dialogue, and, and also, they have attended all the 10 development dialogues. But there's somebody else who is very near and dear to me, who was there when we started the conference and has attended all the 10 of them, and that's my father. So when we started the development dialogue, 
my dad was a young man 81 years old and so i want to invite all of you to come back and celebrate the 20th development dialogue in 2027 with my dad so you know so this last 10 years a lot of people have spent a lot of time lot of effort we have probably invested over 200 crores so it's a, it's a fair decent amount of investments and and so what have we learned from all that essentially all that learning boils down to three things you know if you if you really want to bring about a social change you have to build capacity within the community to spread the solution otherwise it it doesn't get anywhere it it just remain to be a great idea so you have to build the capacity to to actually spread the solution within the community that you want to do you have to co-create the solutions with the people that you're trying to help that is they have to have the people that you're trying to help have to have a intellectual participation in the solution that you're coming up and and they have to be pretty much all the way there with you in in when you create the solution and thirdly uh, you need enthusiastic participation like if you really have come up with an intervention that makes sense there should be a huge amount of pull for it that is we shouldn't be pushing it on people because that's like pushing a wet rope uh there should be a pull people should be craving for it and they should come and say please please come please do it please help us and so 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 i think to some extent we built some of it and there's a lot more to be done in that area but where do we go from here and and so so let me talk a little bit more about building capacity so you saw a little bit of this lead program where four college kids come together pick a problem in the society and solve so in the last 7 8 years i think about 30000 students have participated and have done 15000 projects and so when you step outside you'll see a lot of these young kids you know running around doing something or the other it's not so much what problem they solve but just giving them a taste of that solving a problem when somebody instead of passively participating in life bottle bottle picks a problem to solve and solve that that's the aha moment that's when they become problem solvers and they'll never go back and become complainers after that um and so we we you know they just pick whatever little small problems big problems and solve it the the next one is is you saw you probably met a lot of the guys in t-shirts walking around here uh the training program that has gotten to be pretty large it's it's for people 18 to 25 years old and um you, you know it's it's a lot of them have education but unfortunately the education in india doesn't prepare you for anything and so so the amazing part of this program which amazes me every time i come here is that within 4 months you can actually change the mindset of these people and and so it's a it's a pretty um, intense program it's all residential they wake up at 5 come here to the center do some yoga go back something 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 go to bed at 11 up at 5 7 days a week no holidays right and a lot of these people have never felt that passion you know a lot of this creative stuff that you saw here on stage they probably get like one evening to say okay get ready now tomorrow you're going to do something and and they they react to it and they can actually do it that's when they find themselves you know most of us in this room we we gone through good education and we already had that passion and you know we have spent day and night working on things that are really interesting but these people haven't experienced it and so work ethic is a big thing secondly they learn to communicate and then they learn some computers and then whatever domain specific thing which is accounting agriculture social entrepreneurship and so on and and these people become a fantastic workforce to implement a lot of these programs programs that we do and the programs our partners do also the for profit companies here and so on and so so this is a big part of what we're doing so some of you saw the campus so we're building a, a large campus 300000 square foot campus and and we're going to be graduating about 5000 people every year so that's a huge amount of capacity that will be building this area and continue to build it so that programs can scale so so what do i mean by building capacity So let's say if you want to help people who live on 2 dollars a day the 5000 people that we graduate actually the starting wage after they graduate is about 8 to 10000 rupees a month which is like 4 dollars a day right so it's not like a huge amount of money but it's an opportunity that they never had before 
it's an opportunity that they really appreciate they take it seriously and they work and then they start working up from there and typically about 500 of them you know make 8 and then 16 and then a few of them make 32 so so that pyramid that force that you see there is what builds the capacity to actually do things and in fact right now we're also working on expanding that the bottom to to get a lot of people who live on 2 dollars a day to become a part of the force for example in a lot of the villages when you do these programs you can get you know there's a lot of for example women in villages who have education but have no opportunity and they're dying to do something so all you probably have to do is to give them two sarees and maybe a smartphone and they'll you know give their life to you and so 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 there's an opportunity to go even down but that's a very cost effective workforce to actually implement so it does two things number one they really understand the problem they have a huge amount of compassion they relate to the people that they work with and it's a very cost effective way of actually implementing a lot of these programs so uh if you build that capacity and people start coming up with an idea uh we want to build an incubation center so that we can help people i understand that's like 84000 or something because hyderabad tea hub is the largest one which is 82000 so so they wanted to bring something which to say it's a little bit bigger than the biggest one so uh so and then we do a program for navodyomi which is uh you know there's a lot of entrepreneurs i think at least 32 million forced entrepreneurs in india where they choose to become entrepreneurs not because they have a choice but that's all they can do they all have 3 4 fifth grade education and and they they are artisans they make food products and they make all kinds of different things very skilled but they don't have a lot of education and typically their businesses are more like 10 20000 rupees a month which is like 2 300 dollars a month and and so they really don't have education but they have two things that are very important for entrepreneurs they know how to take pain they never complain and secondly they know how to do things with whatever little they have which is very different than a typical mba you know typical mba you say do something they'll do a strategic plan and come back and say give me a billion and give me this give me that give me 100 people i'll do something uh so these guys are actually very good entrepreneurial skill but what they don't have is education so this program is a little bit more of doing mba 101 to these people we've done about 5000 of them and it's very nice to see a lot of them scale uh 10 times 20 times and and a lot of them scale maybe 20 30% of the time so that's that's a very nice program so so and there also we have actually i also have people here from the fourth sandbox uh nalgonda uh so we have yeah well give, give me a big hand that's the baby sandbox that just got started so so i i guess i missed it there but but we have three sandboxes and we have uh, ek soch dilip dilip modi he is here with us and uh, and and he is the uh, visionary and the founder of that sandbox raju reddy is the founder and visionary of the kakatia which is in nizamabad he is uh, just on the way from japan to here so he'll be here this afternoon and so we got these three sandboxes so if you have capacity if you have training if you have all these things so what can you do with it well we we actually funded about 136 programs uh which are all like social interventions and and they're on they're in agriculture livelihood health and education and so out of those 136 about 22 of them have reached a certain amount of scale and and they're ready for getting even bigger uh 42 of them are sort of in the proof of concept stage and about 72 of them a lot of them in idea stage where people are just thinking about it and within the audience here we probably have people from from a lot of these different stages um and and so and and so we have a lot of the partners and you'll get to interact with a lot of them so just to i'm going to pick three examples and tell you where where we go next with all these things so akshay patra i think uh, a lot of you anybody who has not seen the kitchen in the audience we just have a few so if if you guys have not had the opportunity to see the kitchen and you missed the field trip yesterday and day before 
we can organize another trip for you guys tomorrow morning because it's something that you should you should see uh, because it shows you what's possible. But and and next session, I think we have CPG who's going to talk a little bit more about it. But it does 1.6 million children every day. But there's 100 million children that need to be fed in India. So it's only 1.6 percent of the problem, right? So the question is. How do, you, how do you get a systemic change? How do you get it up to 30, 40, 50 percent so that you can actually say you solve the problem? So uh, the, the, a lot of you have seen the farm pond program and, and so we have those 28 machines, the machines that like dig the hole and every machine does a farm pond 40 hours nonstop, which is impressive but I think we probably need 28,000, 280,000 of these machines to work in certain areas to actually solve the real irrigation problem. So they need to scale too. And then if you look at the uh, malnutrition program, you know, we found, uh, you know, all these people, they found a way to solve the malnutrition problem. So if you give them 100 kids, there's maybe two, three kids among them who are medically, have medical issues, very serious issues and you can't do much. But most of the kids, within three years, they can make them normal, which is pretty nice. But you know, in this district alone, there is 3,000 of them. And so if you go across the country, it's a big program. So how do you, how do you scale programs like this? So the, the, uh, so the first 10 years, it's all about building that relevance. So if you sort of look at this pyramid, as, as usually you look at the pyramid as an income pyramid, it, in some ways it's also an income pyramid, but also it's a capability pyramid. It, it's, it's the capability of the people that can do all those different things, who have fantastic education and so on. So I think if we have to scale a lot of the programs that we have do in the sandbox, we need to bring a lot more systems thinking. So I think the next 10 years is all about bringing that systems thinking, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. So, so we started off with relevance plus innovation. If you have relevance plus innovation, it, it does have an impact. So you can't, you can't argue with the fact that Sandbox is doing okay and, and having a big impact. But if we really want to scale, if we really want to have a big impact on the world, we need some big ideas. We need, we need to bring the same level of discipline that you do when you scale very large companies and, 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 and have that systems thinking. So, um, so when do you know you have a proof of concept? You know when you have those three elements, which is building capacity, you have co-created the solution, and you have an enthusiastic participation. Enthusiastic participation meaning, for example, the farm pond program, what Naveen does is that, let's say if there's 50 farmers in a village who need the farm pond, all the 50 farmers have to actually sign a letter. It has to go to Gram Panchayat. The Gram Panchayat head has to sign the letter, and then any other officials. And then they come and make a request. And, and, and then, you know, so what happens is that we have a capacity to maybe build two, three thousand farm ponds, but right now we have a backlog of maybe five, six thousand, right? So that means that there is a pull. And, and not only can we do that work, we can actually ask them to help in whatever way they can help. And so, so having, creating that pull is, is very important because then you know you have something. And, and what we also know is that if you start with the big ideas and, and you don't have the proof of concept, if that's a secondary to your effort, big impact will not happen. In fact, a lot of the world uh, does that. You know, it doesn't matter whether it's universities or big foundations and, and the people who can think. You know, it's not that they lack compassion. The only reason they get into doing these things is because they have a compassion, a good heart, and a good desire to want to help. But everybody starts with, in some ways, the wrong question. You know, they start by saying, okay, I want to help the world. What can I give that I have? So smart guys have a lot of ideas and they want to come up with a solution. But what I have found is that bringing a solution where there is no capacity to actually understand it or absorb it or spread it does not work. So you cannot lead social innovation with a big idea. However, if you, if you have just relevance, if you have what we have here in Sandbox, 
I think we'll be doing okay. It's nothing wrong with it. But it'll never be anything big unless we, we, we inject big ideas into it. And, and also what happens is most of the nonprofits will, will not understand where they need those big ideas. And part of the reason is that being in the nonprofit business is very hard. You know, first of all, you don't have resources, you're struggling to make things happen and everything else. And, and the biggest challenge for any nonprofit is raising money. And to raise money, you constantly have to say how great you are. I've never seen a nonprofit which comes and says, well, maybe I'm broken here, right? And, and, but unfortunately, as you start scaling, the thing that breaks you is not your strength. It's the weakest link in the chain, right? And so, so how do we get that critical thinking uh, into, into our psyche so that we actually understand the weakest link and then start calling on the big ideas, the people, expertise and so on, to actually solve the problem. So, so I think as we, we have people here in the idea stage, proof of concept, big ideas and so on. So there are things that you're trying to do that you're not able to do. So you have to be a little bit more critical about yourself and say, where am I falling short? Where can people help me? And, and then inject these sort of the big ideas. So what we want to do is to, is to launch this fellows program. So what is a fellows program? It's, it's a program where experts, you know, people who have done things, can come and spend three months here. And because, you know, DD is fun and field trips are fun, but there's only that much you can either absorb or contribute to what's going on here. So we would love to have people come and spend about three months in the sandbox. And they can do two things. They can, number one, contribute to a lot of things that we do here. And, and also, they can go back with new insights because it's not, there's not too many places where you'd have easy access. Because here, we actually have a very nice ramp all the way from $2 to $4 to $8 to 16 to whatever. And therefore, you have a way to communicate and touch and feel these people and so on. So, so I'm sure if you spend three months here, you'll leave with a lot of new insights. And so, uh, you know, most of the programs don't scale without the government participation. And so, uh, Secretary Subhash Kuntia and IT Secretary Manjula, uh, they've all made the commitment to, to see what they can do. In fact, uh, uh, Secretary Kuntia, he's going to go back and see if he can find a young, energetic uh, bureaucrat, IS officer, who can come here and spend a few months to think about this issue. That is, we want people who don't just come and complain about things, right? We want people who say, what are the constraints? What are the political realities? Why is it that if you want to do something, it's hard to do? And then find solutions around it and, and, and come up with a, with a way to actually make it happen. Because there's always a way to make it happen if you get enough good people thinking about these issues. And so, uh, so, so I think, I think you know, problem solvers and people who understand the system to overcome that is going to be very important. And, and all these fellows can, can work with some of our programs or partners programs or anything. So it's just an open invitation for a lot of people to come spend time here. And then, uh, you know, foundations, you know, the, the Gates Foundation, Tata Foundation, there's a whole bunch of other foundations. They can come and spend time here, and, and I'm sure they would have a huge value. In fact, I and Jayshree, we were with Bill Gates just a couple of months ago in Seattle. In Seattle, they have these beautiful buildings, two buildings, where they have a thousand people, and he introduced us to their nutrition experts. And it's amazing how all these thousand people, everybody is smarter than the next person. And they know so much. This nutrition person, I mean, there's nothing he didn't know. But unfortunately, sitting in Seattle, trying to solve a problem in India, it's, it's going to be tough. It's hard. But if he came and spent three months here, I'm sure he'll add an amazing amount of value to the program that we do, you know, the, the intervention that we have. And so, uh, you know, and then, and then the technology, you know, I think, I think we know that technology plays a very big role in terms of building platforms and reducing the cost of all the interventions that we do and so on. And, and we have MIT and UNB and Queens and IITs and IASCs and all kinds of places. And, and there's no reason as to why 
a lot of them have a very genuine deep desire to help and and so so we would love to have them come and spend 3 months here and and work on that corporations i mean corporations in fact i just met people who have just retired from let's say infosys for uh, uh, who were heading a lot of big groups and 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 banks and so on so there's always the corporate csr which can provide the funding and some help but also people who actually practice in the in the corporation because we need that systems thinking we need people who can come and say well there's no reason as to why you need to do 1000 you can do a million and this is how we do it and and this is the discipline that you need and so on and so university professors you know financing professionals you know most of the problem in scaling non profits is having the right financial model so there's no reason as to why we cannot have dalal street and wall street professionals you know like i think ajit dayal is here from bombay and uh, uh, you know they can help us come up with a better financial model in fact there's a lot of new innovation going on in financial modeling for non profits whether social bonds and whole bunch of stuff because for the for profit world the total amount of money available the credit available is like 120 trillion dollars in the social sector it's, it's pretty minuscule and so so there is a lot of that knowledge that can be used to fund these big ideas and then management consultants you know we have bridge span we have a lot of other people who sort of not only see just one organization but they see hundreds of organizations and so i'm sure they they would have a lot more clarity in in looking at things and saying hey i've seen like something like this in malaysia or something like this in vietnam or wherever and be able to like provide that guidance so this is an open invitation to to all of you and your friends and anybody that you may know who who can spare 3 months and and they can come here and spend 3 months and we'll make sure that you're nice and comfortable and you get to spend a lot of time and dig deep into the the kind of programs that you like doing and uh, and and i'm sure it will be a very rewarding experience for yourself and a hugely hugely uh, beneficial to the sandbox and so uh, you know with that i think i would like to close my comments and so during the development dialogue you know we we really have people here from all the way from idea to proof of concept to scaling and uh, and what i would like to do is to make sure that we connect with each other quite a bit.